okay record. okay so now we are um recording the course introduction so um as you see now i am sharing a um a markdown document and this is um, the readme file of our um, course repository which you can find on github uh, and the address i think you all have gotten it in in email uh, you will actually find uh, just to be clear it's on github.com slash it lnu expat competence so all relevant course information will be uploaded uh, on on that um, repository and the reasoning behind this uh, is that we I, I want to keep it um, uh, i want to keep it simple and i don't want to force you into um, any kind of um, uh, learning um, uh, platform uh, that you might only use uh, for a couple of weeks uh, and and then never again so i'm going to make a new share and sh sh so we can see how this looks and now you can see that we we have the course uh, repository here and this is the same page but we see the source code on on the other side of my visual studio code uh, if you want to go uh, and look at the 2021 edition, if you're curious about how did it look last year, you can actually download that release to your computer and, and check it out. It's not much difference. Uh, but let's start with the study um, uh, uh, with the study guide and, and the important links and, and such. Um, I'll make this a little bit bigger. So the course homepage, this is just a link that links to, to back to where we are now. Uh, the Discord server, that is what we're going to use as the main communication tool. And uh, why we have chosen Discord, it's uh, it's a, also a really nice way of, of doing the workshops. It has a really good features for video and audio. It's a really nice place to actually be able to, to do these kind of workshop activities when you when you help each other out and you're much more flexible and can uh, do that without booking Zoom rooms and etc. in advance. Uh, so the Discord will be the main place of communication. And I just say that like you're better off of sending a question on discord than than emailing me or any anyone else of the tas etc so please use discord we are going to have an an faq uh, that if there is questions that arise uh, will uh, try to update this uh, document um, uh, on this page uh, there is an IT tutorial template. I'll click on this just in a little bit uh, because that is quite uh, uh, important for the course. Uh, and then we have the course syllabus. Um, uh, you have perhaps all seen this, but this is actually what is controlling, like it's actually what, what we agree upon when, when we do this course. Uh, so the objectives here uh, is for this course is that you should have a knowledge um, of um, IoT applications. Uh, you should be uh, able to develop applications for IoT devices. Uh, you should have an essential understanding of sensors and, and, and gathering sensor data. Uh, you should also understand the IoT infrastructure and, and the message protocols. And you should also develop something that includes visualization and databases. And well, one objective, which is probably something that you will see is very important in this course is that you should have a hands-on experience of, of developing an IT project. And I'm a big believer that you, you learn the best when, when you're free to explore and you also uh, do something. You, you Well, it shouldn't just be theoretical. It's better that you try to develop something you get your hands dirty. Well, they might not be literally dirty when you're working with IoT, but I think you see the point there that you should be developing something. You should make something, create something. Uh, and that's when you learn the best. Uh, so that's the gist of the course. The, I would say that like you, you do something in this course, you write a, 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 a a, a, um, a report on this and that's how we examine this course uh, 
so it won't be uh, a theoretical exam. There won't be any quizzes. It will be that you make something. And what that is, well, I'll come to that a little bit later, but you're super free to explore more or less everything, but um, that's about it. Um, there are some other resources. You can see that we have another, uh, like a GitHub um, for um, for uh, Internet of Things related things here on, on uh, uh, what like we have done a little bit of other repositories you can find. I think if you go into this applied IoT, you will find a lot of code snippets, et cetera, for sensors that we have used in the summer courses. Uh, but you will probably Google around for whatever problem you have. And well, it's just one more place to find things. And then there are a couple of um, links to YouTube accounts. And if you press this YouTube CS LNU, Computer Science LNU, we do have a lot of videos, uh, both in, in courses that actually might be helpful for you uh, in whatever you do. But um, if we publish any lectures, it will actually end up here uh, at Computer Science LNU. And we've had a summer course for the last three years um, where we have gathered a lot of interesting guest material, like guest talks and presentations uh, that you can find here as well. Uh, this Slack server, I should probably remove as we are not going to use that in this course anymore. Sorry for the confusion in the beginning. And the staff in this course is, I will be the course administrator, um, work here uh, at Linnaeus and I work in Kalmar. Uh, so you can place me on a map. Uh, we'll also be joined in by uh, two postdocs, Neda Malaki and Arslan Musadik. They are two postdocs, uh, uh, that is as when you're working as a researcher and they're working in the IoT lab, in the IoT lab uh, research group. They will also be joining in. Uh, we also might be joined in by Lars Håkansson, which is the, um, uh, working at the mechanical engineering department here in, uh, in Växjö. He did a great um, uh, presentation about uh, sensors last year, uh, like from, from in, not from the actual sensor uh, uh, reliability, etc. side. Uh, so haven't planned that date yet, so I'll go back to that later. And then we have two teaching assistants, and they are the ones that will be spending the most time with you in this course. So these are the two biggest resources that we do have in time in, in terms of time. Uh, yes, uh, to be uh, like very short here, uh, the, the course is obviously aimed for people that are working within the industry. Uh, you are all here because of just that fact that you have a relevant expertise in uh, any kind of area uh, that is that relates to IoT. Uh, so this is a master course. That means that it's an advanced level course, uh, but still uh, you can actually apply for this course, even uh, if you, you did, actually don't have the formal requirements based on you on that you have worked in the industry uh, and work in a related area. So it's an industry, it's a course aimed for industry. So we try to not keep it too theoretical. We try to be applied and we also try to make it as um, flexible as possible as you are all working full time. Um, you should be keen to learn more about IT and you should get a hands and uh, hands on experience. Uh, so there are like some expectations, like obviously you should try to read this document and well, where do you find this document? You won't be able to not find it if you find the link to uh, the GitHub because this is the readme file. Um, so, um, but the thing here is that we we do have um, uh, quite limited time. This year we are running this course on um, uh, in one month. I'll very soon come to the planning, but last year we did run it for uh, two month two months, uh, and this year one month. Uh, 
we wanted to compress it a little bit because it was uh, like a too too much slack time in between like it's good to have like a high tempo when you do things uh, but let's see how this works but as we have doubled the pace for this year uh, it will take a little bit more toll on on your free time when you're reading this course so be, be sure to try to plan your studies we're talking about the free credit course uh, and free credits in in terms of time uh, for for your part is um, let's see us do uh, it's 80 hours i had to like just <laughs> calculate that but it's 80 hours so for your time and we're talking about like your study time uh, this course should apply for about 80 hours uh, time um, and that is in total with everything and for a normal student obviously you might never count the exact amount of hours and you're not supposed to you can do it in less time and in more time that's how it works uh, but it should be around 80 hours in in as as, as a mean for and as an average for for all of you um and as we're doing this in one month, we are talking about more or less that you need to put in maybe 15, 15 hours per week or so, just so you know. Um, and then uh, I, I would be really glad if you try to actually, during this course, use Discord as much as possible, log in, and, and whenever you start working on something, keep the discord client going and uh, uh, we have had uh, some experience using discord in courses and doing online courses and i can say that we've actually had a lot of students using discord and they are like logged in and sitting in a voice channel muted without even talking but in that way you get the sense of belonging with others uh, that do the same thing that you're like studying together even if you're on total if it's like in in different places uh, so please try to keep all the communication in the discord server uh, so whatever you think about there is always someone else that thinks about the same thing and i think this especially is important for those of you that work in the same workplace so like all you guys that sit together in in virtual in Gothenburg, like if you're three or four people that are like actually sharing an office and and sit together, it might be like very easy for you to discuss and and like talk and 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 like have your own little thing about the course. Uh, but try to put these discussions in in the online Discord server because that will actually make it better for for everyone so i'm just asking you all try to pitch in it's just for one month but the course will really depend on on keeping uh, a live and and updated communication and and discord is really a good tool for this so uh, so please answer and ask questions like as, as much as possible um and like I think the like the, the single most important thing, and it's probably maybe obvious, but I mean, if we don't think this is fun, we we shouldn't do it. So try to have fun. Uh, we try to not take things too serious. Uh, like let's have fun. Uh, let's uh, try and and uh, and, uh, and 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 share our experiences. I, I'm sure that many of you have worked with with many things and we can learn from each other but like try to do something that is fun and try to have fun uh and um i'll try to well be as um uh, be as flexible and uh make it make it as an inclusive atmosphere as as possible um but yeah that's the overall is that you should build a connected sensor uh that is presented over the internet so in order to get uh, your grade in this course, uh, even though the grade is something that 
you I'm not sure it depends on who you ask but some some people are like they don't really care about the grade they want some experience and they want some knowledge and in my opinion uh, opinion that is uh, that is the, the best like <laughs> if you're rather here for for learning rather than getting a grade it's uh, more fun uh, for both parties uh, but um, Obviously, getting a grade is important for uh, for you if you're going to show that you have done the course for your um, uh, for your peers and your um, employer. And it is actually important also for the university because the university depends on, well, it's our payment system, so to say. So obviously, we we uh, both uh, want uh, to give a grade, uh, but in in order to get that there are some um, objectives that needs to be fulfilled. And I talked about them. These are the same that, uh, that I showed in the course syllabus before. Uh, but overall is that you should build something. And when I say something, you should build uh, some, some kind of connected thing uh, that in some way sends a value or receives a value, but it should communicate over the internet. That is sort of the gist of the course. And well, you can say that, well, does it need to be connected to the internet? I might don't, I might want to connect it just in my local area network. Yeah, that's okay because, well, you have these gray areas of definitions here. So if some of you are probably uh, like, I, like Jonas said here before, that we're dealing with home automation systems. Uh, well, there is a lot of things that you might not want on the internet uh, because of security and like, why? <laughs> uh, but obviously that is like, if you have a connected device that communicates uh, over, um, uh, over some kind of network that is included. Yeah, and you can, do more or less uh, whatever you want, uh, but you need to fulfill the course objectives. Yeah. Let's uh, just go uh, directly to the communication strategy. I'll go to the tutorial template in just a bit. Uh, so the communication strategy, try to like avoid email. And I say that because if you send me an email, that's totally fine. Uh, but uh, I get too many emails as many of you also might uh, do. So it takes a little bit time for me to answer. Uh, so please try to keep like only questions that are personal uh, uh, that has regarding uh, an individual question or, or a grade or whatever that they obviously can send an email. Otherwise, please put it in a public forum, like in a public channel on the Discord server. And it shouldn't say Slack here, it should say Discord, uh, but use public channels, not DMs. So try to avoid direct messages as much as possible. Um, yep. Um, one thing that I can um, uh, say that makes a, a big difference, we're not that many people in the course, but please respond. So like if there is any information uh, that is distributed in the course, let's say that, okay, we have a lecture in, in two days or we have a workshop or whatever information, uh, try to just give a thumbs up, like it. Uh, and even though, well, uh, that why does that matter? It actually matters as an indication of how many people have seen the information. So be, be, be very open of, of like liking or putting a, an, any kind of emoji. Uh, if you don't like it, you can put a thumbs down, but at least that is some kind of representation of that you have at least seen it. So try to try to do that um, in the Discord uh, server as much as possible. Uh, and any reading material, that is uh, something that we are not handing out a book. Uh, we might come with a couple of suggestions, but otherwise there is no uh, reading material other than we will be able to find on, uh, on the internet as documentation in this course. Um, yeah, and the requirements for the examination. So you will um, actually, if you haven't worked with GitHub before, now is the time. So we require you to set up your own GitHub repository uh, for this course. Uh, so you should be writing your report in English. 
so even though if you speak Swedish, you need to write it in English, uh, you will need to discuss different options. So um, there is a template and I'll show it just in a bit, but that like in the report, it's, it's uh, important that you don't say that, okay, I did this. You need also to say that I did this because of, and this might have worked in a, in another way. Like if you choose any kind of database, you need at least to discuss like what other options are there. Could I have done in other in other, uh, some other way? Uh, so a motivation and with references. And in this case, you don't need academic references. It's okay in this in this course to uh, use any kind of reference. So if you find something online that like is a good motivation of why you did it. Maybe someone else has done it with a, a, like a good success, but you need to at least give some kind of reference. You can't just say that, okay, this is how it is. And I, that's why I did it. Try to find a relevant reference. Obviously a good reference is better than a bad reference. Uh, if So try to find a good reference. And I would be glad if you also try to dive in and, and uh, use uh, some kind like Google Scholar or anything, but I wouldn't say it's a requirement. You should have all the code in your repository. Uh, your report uh, is written in the readme file, which as you see now, uh, with Markdown. And if you don't know Markdown, you will learn. And it's actually very, very simple. So one of the easiest things to learn is Markdown. So, yeah. Um, and then you actually send a link in an email to me when we're done. So we don't have a submission system. You, yeah, you drop the link to me, uh, to your repository. So I'll tr like in this way, we have sort of managed away all the uh, learning platforms in, in the system. We, we, we make this very, very simple. So, um, if we want to look at the report, I can, we, we might want to discuss this once more um, uh, when we get to nearer the report. But I'll just quickly give a brief overview on, on how the examination, the actual report is going to be. So what you're going to do is that you're going to copy this template into your own uh, um, repository. And you're free to change as much as possible, but this is, is made for you to, to make it as easy as possible. Uh, you should, you should be included. Like everything that is uh, mentioned here should be included. And I have done this template, so it should be pretty straightforward for you to just put your thumb in one place and then continue down. And even like I should have a title. Well, obviously you should have a title of your project, but yeah. It is a checkbox here and you should have a title. So, and your student name and short project overview. And then you do like how much it might take to do. So you actually do your report for the project as a tutorial for someone else with some added motivation and stuff. But this report is very much inspired from like an hackster.io or any kind of IoT or embedded or tutorial that you can find on the internet. So you will or, or, or uh, more or less write your own tutorial on, on whatever project you build. So this is a way, very fun way to examine. And it's also a fun way because you actually share something that can be read and reused by other people online. So uh, I think this is fun. Uh, so you should have some objectives, why you chose it, and then you present the material and put in some pictures. And this is just an example. And then you talk a little bit about the environment uh, and also how you structure your project. Do you have a source folder, a documentation folder, etc.? You're actually a little bit free. I'm not setting any boundaries here, but you should be in any way have a structure of your project that is described. And then you put everything together. Well, you need some kind of circuit diagram. It can be hand-drawn, so that's totally fine. You can hand-draw your circuit diagram and then 
snap a picture of it and include in the report. Uh, you need to do at least some kind of electoral calculations. It doesn't need to be that very advanced, but you need to be aware of the of the of the voltage and current. Like, and if you have a battery, you should at least provide some kind of approxim approximation of how long the battery will last. Uh, and limitations of hardware depending on design choices. So you all have probably ended up in using some kind of ESP32, I guess, because I'm being very keen on on uh, you using that hardware. But there is a lot of of uh, limitations of that device that well you might want to discuss in in the project. So maybe it draws a lot more power than than well you're happy with or you could have extended the battery life if you have chosen some other hardware or or the range or net choice of networks etc cetera, etc cetera. but you need to at least be aware of the limitations and you always have these design choices um so whatever hardware you choose you choose something and then you're like well there is always a compromise somewhere and also i want you to include like a discussion about the way forward like if you were to build this as a product, if you were to build whatever idea you have and do it in scale, how would you think? Is this possible or, or what's the next step from this? I don't expect that you will be able to like have a solution for that, but I want you to at least try to think about it and, and, and put it in text. And then we talk about platforms and infrastructure, and there are so many platforms and you're actually free to choose whatever you want. I'm keen that you choose to try to do, build something yourself, um, but you need to describe it in terms of functionality and uh, like obviously why, why you have chosen this platform, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then the code, like you don't need to copy paste all the code in your project might be, might be much, it might be a little less, depends on what kind of application you're building. But if there is some things that you want to point out, like that the report is where you can probably put some code snippets that you're just explaining one very important function, like, or whatever you're trying to explain, but like the whole code repository is somewhere else. So this should be a readable report, not uh, reading through uh, pages and pages of, of code. So. Uh, talk about the physical network layer, like how often is the data sent, which wireless protocol did you use, transport, etc., and the visualization and user interface, and then like final results of the pictures and and video and 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 such. Uh, you're not required to do a video presentation because we are going to have these uh, live presentations um, later on uh, last week in the course, uh, but. Uh, a video presentation is actually very nice if you can if you can do uh, that's uh, always a good thing uh, so i'm going to uh, skip to um, the planning and as you can see here this was updated one hour ago <laughs> um, so uh, you will have a pretty good idea on on when things uh, are updated or not. Uh, so we uh, talking about the general planning, it starts today and we're like in until 11th of November. So we're talking about five weeks in total, um, about 16 hours per week. And as I said, we actually had this course in um, eight weeks last year. So it was a little bit less each week, but now we have it a little bit more condensed. Uh, let's evaluate that. If that is a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know yet, but I think this is a good way. Um, so uh, so there are uh, some lectures. I will update this planning, but um, there are a couple of lectures here which aren't um, uh, set in date yet. I need to agree, but every lecture will be uh, at uh, late like late afternoons uh, or evenings and all the lectures that are going to be distributed in this course will also be recorded so rather like the live lectures obviously there will be a, a chance to, 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 to ask questions and such if we have a live lecture but uh, the course is generally will be 
uh, Q&A sessions and workshop sessions. And then the lectures will be something that is more or less recorded. Um, so um, we'll meet here today. Uh, every Friday, we'll have a, a Q&A session Friday afternoon so that you can try to plan. Uh, week 43, I'm actually on vacation. Uh, so there, I won't be uh, doing much that week. Uh, and then there are two uh, points. I will discuss them uh, after this recording, uh, but the like to be um, uh, decided uh, then. Uh, but in two weeks, uh, um, I want uh, in one week. I mean, I want us to have uh, the first project presentation, and that will be obligatory, and we'll do it online. Uh, and the same thing with week forty-five. So rather than I have decided two dates now, I want to bring that up as a discussion here and then we decide together because then we try to do it as flexible as possible. And then uh, regarding the recordings, I have procured a list of recordings that are uh, relevant for this course and uh, that, uh, that you should um, uh, try to digest in this course. So we have a couple of connectivity. So there are two lectures here with connectivity in IoT and LoRa in IoT. Uh, there is uh, a couple of uh, an energy and sensor data and applications and hardware. Uh, there is one uh, lecture here about uh, con putting containers on, on the ESP32, uh, really interesting. So actually a way to, um, uh, run a virtual machine on, on the ESP32 uh, and in that way more or less containerize applications as you do with Docker uh, but on embedded hardware so it's super cool <laughs> so I can really uh, actually if you if you watch that one uh, it was recorded two months ago uh, but still um, it's it's very relevant, uh, and uh, we are working with with Toit uh, uh, a little bit. So if you want to explore that route, uh, I would be happy to to see the results. Uh, it's very very interesting. Uh, there are a lecture about battery uh, and um, from the soft uh, battery manufacturer here in um, uh, north of uh, Kalmar. They are really, really big in, in, in IoT. More or less all IoT devices run on battery as it's more or less, I would say, uh, uh, almost the definition that it's wireless and better operated today. We've talked about massive IoT, not, not maybe industrial IoT, but massive IoT. Uh, I've actually put in a link to a small video which we recorded just one week ago. I think it's interesting because we did actually put a, a, a OT operational technology and Modbus uh, up to test uh, and talking about security. So we did actually a live uh, lab in in uh, one of our labs uh, when we have a a, a real steam boiler uh, and we sort of hacked that one and and, and uh, also uh, had a security uh, professional uh, trying to stop the attack. Uh, so it's a short video, but might be relevant when we're talking about industrial uh, IoT and uh, how insecure the OT protocols, like the operational technology, we're talking about industrial protocols. They are like by default, they don't have security at all. Uh, there is uh, lectures about MQTT and PubSub protocols and uh, Docker and TIG stack. Uh, these two are actually re really good. We, um, uh, I, I can really vouch that you all try to get your head around Docker if you haven't used it. It will help you a lot in deploying any kind of applications uh, on the cloud, that is. And then we have a little bit of privacy and security and edge computing. So there might be more, more relevant material that is already pre-recorded, which I will share. Uh, but this is like an overview. Uh, there are some relevant materials in, from, from which is now one year old, but still very relevant. Uh, actually, I uh, ha we had a lecture with the Things Industries and one lecture with Helium last year 
which both are very relevant today. And now we're talking about LoRa one. So if you have time, like you could go into them as well. And then this lecture uh, about tiny machine learning, I can really like if you, I wouldn't say that it is included in this course, but it's really good information if, if you want to dive into the area of putting machine learning on on embedded devices, which I personally think is is uh, is the future. Like what what the trend is that we we have these machine learning models and they are getting smaller and smaller, and the edge hardware is getting more and more powerful. Uh, so this is a really uh, interesting uh, presentation. Um, and then data cake is actually also really interesting. So there, there are loads of more presentations. So feel free, free to explore in like the YouTube videos that we have on computer science LNU. Uh, there are now they are a little bit old, like they are from 2020, but there is also um, uh, some getting started with videos like how do you connect your sensor etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, that you can find here like but the workshops are for that so um we we generally have two things uh when we meet together so as i said there will be some lectures and the lectures will be like one way like either they are already pre-recorded you watch them whenever you want to watch them uh, and or, or they will be recorded live, like you can attend like in Zoom or, or you will watch them live, but like they are more one way information, that is the lectures. And then the most important part I would say is not the lectures, but it's actually us meeting and discussing and, and like meeting together. And then we have generally uh, two things, like we have the presentation sessions, there will be two of them, Directly after I stop this recording, we will talk about uh, some suggestions for date, and then we decide right after that. Uh, and then we have the workshops. And the workshops are when you meet the teaching assistants, and they are here to help you in your projects. So the most of the learning is actually done in the workshops. And that has been the most effective way as we have done this course before and also as a summer course is that actually doing things in a workshop format when you meet online you discuss and you iterate forward and if you get stuck you jump in and you get help uh, it's been really really effective so that is why we're putting so much emphasis on the workshops last year we had workshops uh, more or less I think two weeks every evening. So Tuesday and Thursday, uh, there were online workshops. I'm going to leave that open because Christopher and Hamad, they will get in contact with you on Discord. They might write a, um, um, a post already this afternoon or tomorrow. And you can sort of vote or, or jump in or they will make a schedule. But there will be workshops maybe two or three evenings every week. And when we talk about workshops for this course, we are using Discord. That means that you will jump in on Discord and you will um, um, meet online. So please make sure that your audio is working on in Discord and, and, and also your video. You'll be able to share screens and, and discuss and show. Uh, so, these are the ones that are going to be discussed. Um, I think that is the general information as a course starts. So I'll stop the recording.